Hey, what's up, my people? I'm so happy that you guys are back this week again. Uh, first of all, thank you for supporting my channel, Hill Tribe Storyteller. And again, my name is Zi Zhang, and I hope that you guys have enjoyed my stories so far and are ready to hear some more this week. I know that my stories might not be the same as the ones that you might have heard from other storytellers, but remember these are oral stories that have been passed down from my parents to me and from their parents to them, so they're subject to change. And I hope that by sharing these stories with you guys, I'll be able to preserve my culture for my kids and future generations. And I appreciate you guys taking the time to join me this week for another episode of The Misadventure of Ja. So this week I'll be sharing with you guys the fifth episode on The Misadventure of Ja. This week's episode is called The Lake of Treasures. So please join me to see what will happen to Ja once King gets a hold of him. A long, long time ago, there was a man named Ja, and we all know that the feud and the beef between King and Ja has gotten worse over the episodes that I've shared with you guys. We know that Ja has made a fool out of King's servants, which made King even more upset. So now King is determined to arrest Ja to make an example out of him so that he can no longer make King look like a fool in front of his citizens. So King came up with this brilliant idea. He's going to round up all his servants, and they're going to go over to Ja's house, and he is going to personally arrest Ja. So the next day, King and his servants went over to Ja's house, and King demanded that Ja come out and talk to him. Ja came out and said, hey, King, what's going on? And King said, Ja, today we're going to arrest you because you have disobeyed some of my royal orders. By fooling around. Second, you've disrespected the villagers. By fooling around. And third, you have disrespected me. By fooling around. So, that is why we're going to arrest you today. So, the servants seized Ja. And King and the servants brought Ja back to the palace. Now, the palace is a multi-story home. So, King decided to throw Ja on the bottom floor. And there, King said to Ja, Ja, I don't want you looking up at me on the second floor. I don't want you checking out the queen. I don't want you checking out my guests. You understand? If I catch you looking up at me or the queen or my guests, you will be executed. Jed said, yes, king. I will stay down here and I will not look up at you or the queen or your guests. So the next day, king had a celebration to celebrate the imprisonment of Ja. So he invited all his royal guests the queen, and everyone else in town. Everyone except Ja. So Ja came up with an idea. He asked one of the servants to fetch King for him. And they did. And when King arrived, Ja said, King, you've imprisoned me for 24 hours and you haven't fed me anything. I think this is a human rights violation. King thought about it and said, Well, I wouldn't want to do that, would I? So I guess what do you want to eat? Ja said, Well, I'm craving for some leafy greens, but you know what? I'll cook it myself. You don't have to trouble with it. I see you have a party going on, so I'll take care of it myself. So Ja asked King's servants to go to the market and find the longest, leafiest greens that they can find. And they did, and they brought it back to Ja. Then Ja started cooking the greens. Now, normally when you cook greens, you would cut them up into smaller pieces, but not Ja. When he cooked the greens, he cooked them whole, the whole plant. It was probably about three meters long. And when he was done cooking, he decided to eat lunch. Now, with the greens being so long, Jacques couldn't eat it normally. To eat it, he would have to raise his chin, look up, and then lower the leafy green into his mouth. And by doing so, he looked up at King and his guests. He continued doing this until King saw him. Oh, this made King furious, and he stormed downstairs, and he said, Ja, I thought I told you that you couldn't look up at me and my guests and the queen, and still you disobey a direct order, and I saw you gazing up at me. And Ja's like, whoa, 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 King, chill, man. I wasn't gazing up at you. I was just eating lunch. See, you see these leafy greens here? I have to eat it that way, or else I'll choke. You wouldn't want me to choke under your supervision now, would you? And King said, Ja, don't lie to me. This is just one of your tricks that you're playing on me to make me look like a fool. Ja said, King, 
No trick. If you don't believe me, you could eat one of these greens yourself. So King tried one of the greens. He tried to eat it normally, but the greens were so long that he ended up slurping and slurping. And then he almost choked on one of them. So Jean said, look, you almost choked. Now eat it the way I eat it. You know, raise your head up and lower the green into your mouth. And King did so, and he was able to eat the greens. And Jean said, see, King, I wasn't looking at you. I was just trying to eat lunch. King said, fine, eat your lunch and keep your head down. Quit messing around. And he stormed back to his party. After the party, King came and informed Ja that the next day, him, the queen, and the servants were all going to go to the gardens to tend to the weeds. So he wanted Ja to house it. Now lately, the livestock has been getting inside the palace and making a mess. So Ja's job was to keep the livestock out in the palace clean. And King said that if he did this correctly, then he will be set free. So the next day, Ja was left to house sit. He did pretty good for the first few hours. Then his mind started to wander. And he figured that house sitting was really, really boring. And he needed to find a way to get out of this duty. So he came up with this brilliant idea. He was going to make some rice cake. And these rice cake was going to be the key to him getting out of house sitting duties. So Jean went to the pantry and got some sticky rice and some red rice and some chocolate. He mixed it all together, grinded it up, and made some rice cake batter. He took the batter and he shaped it into the shape of poo. Now Jean was pretty proud of himself. By mixing the red rice and the chocolate and the sticky rice, he was able to make the rice cake look a lot like dog poo. He put the rice cake on banana leaves and placed it all over the palace. Then, it was just a waiting game. Later that night, when King was about to come home, Ja opened the door and let all the livestock in. Knowing that when King gets home, he'll see the livestock roaming around the palace and be furious. And it worked just as Ja planned. When King came home and saw the livestock all over the palace, King was furious. He yelled at Ja and said, Ja, I thought I told you to keep the palace clean and keep the livestock out. How come the livestock are all over the place? And what is all this poo doing in the palace? And Ja was like, whoa, 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 king, calm down. I was just making dog poo patty for you, man. Why are you so mad? You see, king, I had to let the livestock in. They're the secret ingredients to making these dog poo patties so delicious. King was disgusted. But that wasn't enough to stop Ja from picking one up and taking a big bite out of it. Ja said to King, "Mm, this is the best dog poo patty I've ever had. You should give it a try. King refused, but Ja insisted. Ja told King that you only live once, and if King was to miss out on this, he would regret it for the rest of his life. So after thinking about it a little bit, King decided that if it was as good as Ja proclaimed it to be, he'll give it a little try. So Ja handed him one of the rice cakes, and King took a small bite out of it. And to his surprise, it was pretty good. It was buttery and soft and delicious. Kind of tasted like rice cake. King finished the dog poo patty and had a wonderful idea. He said to Ja, Ja, why don't you go to the garden with the queen and the servants tomorrow? And I'll house sit the palace. And you know what's even better? I will make some dog poo patty for you guys when you return. Ja smiled at King and agreed. This was going exactly how he planned it. The next day, Ja, the queen, and the servants all went to the garden and left King to house at the palace. Now, King was determined to make some more dog poo patty. So, while he was home, he let all the doors open and let all the livestock in. The livestock pooped all over the palace, and King spent the day gathering their poo and patting them down to little patties, putting them on banana leaves, and leaving it all over the palace. Now, King spent the rest of the day waiting for Ja to come home so that he can prove to Ja that he was a better dog poo patty maker. Later that day, when Ja came home, King was waiting for them with a big smile on his face. He couldn't wait to show Ja what he had made that day. So when Ja got home, King told Ja that he spent the whole day 
making dog poop patty, and that his dog poop patty was better than Ja's. Ja disagreed with him and said that if his dog poop patties were better, then he shouldn't have any issues trying in front of everyone. King agreed and took one of the patties and stuffed it in his mouth. Immediately, <laughs> King spat out his patty. Now, Ja's patty was made out of sticky rice, while King's patty was made out of actual dog poo. Upon seeing King's reaction, Ja took off and headed for the hills. Immediately, King and his servants chased after Ja. This time, Ja wasn't so lucky, and they were able to catch him within a few minutes. King was furious by now, and orders his servants to take Ja down to the lake and string him up to the tallest tree. And they did. While they were tying Ja to the tree, King remembered that he had forgotten his axe back at the palace. With all the commotion that's going on, he had forgotten it. So he and the servants would have to go back to the palace to retrieve the axe, so that they can cut the tree down so that Ja could drown in the lake. So they all left Ja hanging by the tree and went back to the palace. Ja was in big trouble this time. King finally caught him, tied him to the tree, with no one around to help him. So Ja started praying. He asked for forgiveness. He asked to change his way. He asked that if he was given another chance, he would never ever joke or fool anyone again. And just like that, his prayers were answered. Not far from where Ja was tied up, a Chinese merchant was passing through the village selling silk and candy and little knickknacks. And when he passed by the tree that Ja was tied to, Ja called out to him, Brother, where are you going? And the Chinese merchant looked up and said, I'm going to sell my stuff. Why are you up in the tree? And Ja said back, Don't you know? I am the king of this village. I stay up here all day and my servant have nothing for me to do except... Watch over my kingdom. But brother, after doing this for so many years, I'm so tired. I see that you are a hardworking man. If you want, you can come up here and I give you my king. The China man thought about it. And he's like, yeah, I would want to be king. I've been a merchant for a long time and kind of tired of being a merchant. So he yelled back at Ja, Okay, you stay up there, brother, and I will come up. And then we can uh, switch places, okay? Ja agreed, and the China man climbed up the tree, and Ja and him switched place. They even changed clothes. Then Ja came down from the tree, took the China man's cart with all the silk, candy, and knickknacks, and went home. Moments later, King and the servants returned with the axe. They wasted no time and started chopping down the tree. The poor China man was stuck on top and didn't know what was going on, so all he did was yell at them. Brother, what are you guys doing? You not know that this is my tree and my country? You cannot do this to me. But King knew better. He knew this might be one of Ja's trick. So he told the servants to ignore the plea for help, and just keep chopping down the tree. Finally, the tree fell, and the China man fell into the lake. Lucky for him, he was able to untie himself, and swam to the other side of the lake and escape with his life. King was so happy. He finally done it. He finally drowned Ja in the lake, and Ja was no longer his problem. The following day, Ja made his way to the palace to show off to King all the merchandises that he acquired from the Chinaman from the following day. King was surprised that Ja was still alive. He said to Ja, How are you still alive? I saw you fall into the lake squished by that giant tree, and yet you're standing here in front of me today. Ja laughed. <laughs> king, 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 you just don't know it. That lake is full of treasure. Because of you, I was able to reach the center of the lake to grab all these merchandises and bring it back with me. If you don't believe it, see for yourself. And King was amazed at the silk and candy and merchandises that Ja had acquired. So he decided that the servants should tie him up to a tree and chop him down so that he could reach the center of the lake and get all the goods and services just like Ja. So later that day, Ja, King, and his servants went down to the lake. 
They picked the tallest tree they could find and tied King to the top. The servants then chopped the tree down, and Zha watched King fall into the center of the lake. <laughs> when King hit the water, it wasn't like what Zha promised. There was no treasure. There was no silk. There was no candy. It was just dark, cold water. King realized that Zha tricked him again, and he was about to die. Luckily for him, he was able to untie himself and come back to the surface. While he was busy drowning, Ja took off and went home. And from that day forth, King made a vow to end Ja's life, no matter the cost. And that, my people, is the end of this story. Remember, the moral of this story is that pride can sometimes make you eat your own word. In this case, your own dog poop patty. And greed is a dangerous thing. It can leave you at the bottom of the lake if you're not careful. Again, thank you for supporting my channel, Hill Tribe Storyteller. I will see you guys all next week. Remember to like and subscribe. And like always, I will see you next story.